Hello and welcome to a chess channel learn video. In this video I'll be going over a game that I played in the USCF rated tournament. In this game I was playing the white pieces white pieces and my opponent was playing the black pieces. My opponent was about 30 to 40 uh, points rated higher than I was. And so without um, any further ado, let's get into the game. So the first moves were e4 that I played. Followed by the moves e5 he refused to play the Sicilian defense, which, was, uh, which is an opening that I'm comfortable with. And I played knight f3, knight c6 was played to defend it. I did knight c3, the three knights game, and according to the move, the black played the four knights game. Um, in this position, uh, I felt pretty good about my opening, because the last time I had played this opponent, I had lost. And it was due to a very s simple in fact fork so i would like to show something that that happened so the, the game last time started off just like this one e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 and instead i played the italian game which is bishop c4 is what i believe after this he played the move knight f3 a uh, knight f6 my bad attacking this pawn right here with his knight. I played knight c3 to defend this pawn. And then he plays the move knight x on e4, like so. Now this move might seem like a blunder as, well, he's giving up a, a knight for a pawn. But you realize that after this move, which is a fork, you lose a minor piece. And at the end of the, the when the when the smoke clears, black is uh, up upon and has a better position. And so to avoid this, I wanted to go with the four knights defense and avoid bringing my bishop out so early. So in this game, after the following moves were played, the four knights game was arrived. In this game, next I played bishop b5 instead of playing bishop c4, which I believe the threat once again survives. My opponent played d6, opening this diagonal for his light squared bishop while blocking out his dark squared bishop. I played knight d5, getting a central square for my knight on d5, which is always good. However, I overlooked the simple threat of knight xd4. That is what was played. I was already down a pawn. I played d3 to kick away this knight. He moves a minor piece again. Back to f6, bishop g5 is played, putting the knight in a pin, and from this position, I was planning on taking my central knight on d5 and my bishop on g5 and coordinating them towards an attack either on this side, since this knight is also pinned to the king, or on this side, since this knight is also pinned. This was partially successful, but not as good as I would desire. Bishop e7 was played, partially ruining my, my plans. I took the bishop, uh, getting rid of his, his um, bishop pair. The queen recaptured. I castled, and bishop g4 pinning my knight to the queen. This position I played h3, removed the defender, or to, um, to remove the bishop. His bishop went back. In this position, I played rook e1. At this moment, I wasn't too worried about this pin. And I thought I could create some sort of tension on this e5 square by maybe following up with moves like c3 followed by d4. Which would then pin this queen to the knight. Or, I'm sorry, pin this queen to the... This, this is the king. <laughs> that is a very nice threat that I have at my disposal. And so, I was hoping to play these moves, but that didn't exactly happen. Black castled. So this already diminishes my threat, so I just start capturing everywhere. I play d4 instead of playing the move c3, followed by d4 to maintain my center by recapturing. He pushes his pawn e4, this I overlooked. I take his bishop, which I seem to be a slight blunder, since after this happens, once my knight moves, you have some severe tension on this f2 square once this pawn moves forward and also this pin is still a strong tool for white or i'm sorry for black 
I took the pawn, and this is something that I was expecting. This move, I was anticipating that if he pushes his pawn, um, after, I, I did not see this, actually, as I was playing the game, but, um, I saw this after e4 had been played, this drops the pawn, since the e4 pawn is actually pinned to the queen. So, I knew that I did not have to move this knight, since this pin is imminent. I took the knight, he took with the queen, which now, in fact, releases any defender on this pawn, and then I regained my pawn that I had lost in the opening. And this is move 15. The bishop captures my knight. I try to be try to prevent doubled pawns near my king's side. So I capture with the queen. The queens come off, and I'm forced to take and create doubled pawns. But as you can see, black's queen side is weak, as he has doubled pawns as well. But now my king is vulnerable to any sort of attack on this g file. He moves his rook on the a file to e8. I also move my rook onto on the a file to e1. We exchange rooks. F5 is played. Move my rook forward to rook e7 to threat this pawn to threaten that pawn. He defends with rook c8 to defend that pawn. Cannot take it anymore. I play b4 with the intention of playing a4 to a5, followed by c4, to c5, which creates a very big weakness in this area, and then my pawns can promote rather smoothly. King f8, uh, dampening my plan since I have to retreat my rook, I waste one move on, um, you know, not uh, progressing these pawns eventually. Rook e3, I move my pawn, my rook backwards, hopefully to maybe play c4, so c4, followed by rook to c3. Rook e8 is played, and I play c4, just what I was wanting. Um, the reason I did not capture in this position is because that would waste another move, and also give his king a better position after he captures, after he recaptures. And I also knew that if the rook captures... If the rook captures, then if I recapture this this rook, then my doubled pawns are fixed, and my position is better than his position. Knowing this, I played c4, strengthening these pawns, preparing to play and make a break in the queen side. Rook xc3 was played like I expected. I took in this position. I was ahead. King e7. Getting a more central square, a4, and d5. In this endgame, I was rather weak. I did not centralize my king at all, and that is my weakness. I never centralize my king, and it is always good to centralize your king in the endgame. I pushed to c5, trying to make some sort of a break. g5. I want to point out that this c5 move threatens b5, and... If pawn captures, then pawn recaptures, and this move makes a very large break in the queen side. G5 was played, trying to take advantage of this open file, and trying to take advantage of this weakness, but I felt that these two pawns would guard properly into an oncoming pawn push. I play B5, CXB5, and AXB5. H5 is played, and now I'm beginning to worry about this pawn push. Uh, my pawns can defend, as they are pretty strong, but um, some sort of a break is a very imminent. If g4 is played, I would like to say that if g4 is played, I would have to capture with this pawn, since if not, if this pawn captured, then this is an open file that my, this pawn would just promote. So if this was played, I would have to take with the f pawn, and then... If this pawn recaptured, then I would have to play h4, then get my king up into a G, the g file and take the pawn. However, this was not played. I played king f2, just securing my king position and also preparing for a defensive 
maneuver onto the g3 square if a pawn were to break in. f4 was played. I do not think this was the best move, but um, it creates doubled pawns if I take. I play e4, dx e4, fx e4, creating what I like to call a very, very big weakness. I did not realize that the move e4 was a blunder. This not only opens up this file, but also makes these files stronger for black and weaker for me since this pawn has been removed and is now on this square. And now in this position, I feel that my my we, my advantage is very minuscule. And also, this sort of a break is no longer a threat since this king is so close and can easily reach the promoting squares. G4 is played. I push my pawn, which I think is a blunder. I did not see the threat. Oh, if I push my pawn, this is a very big threat. This forces me to either go here or here. Going backwards would be not so good. If I go here, I am in a deadlock. And so are these pawns, but I am in deadlock. I cannot come to the aid of my pawns on, this fi on these files. Because if I do, this pawn will promote. And if I take this pawn, then this pawn will promote. And if I capture here, which is what I did, or actually that's not what I did, but if I capture here, these pawns will promote my pawn being here. It is very hard to stop these pawns if they are moving in tandem. It will be very hard and it will be very bad if this king also comes over. So I played h4, I think the better of the moves, but in putting my king in, dread, in, a, in a gridlock. He played the move I expected, I went inside, and now these two pawns, as well as my king, are in a, uh, a gridlock. I played d5 check, king e5, I realized that this is a pretty big threat now. This, this king is too far. I played d6, this move wins. However, I did not see the follow -up properly. As you can see, if... Pushes, promotes. King can't stop it. If captures, b6 is unstoppable. Captures, captures, promotes. Ignores, promotes. Therefore, I thought I had a game in my hand and I became very hyper and I started, be I, I began to rush. Took and I played a blunder, c6. This no longer has the threat of playing b6. This no longer has the threat of promoting this pawn since this king can catch it catch it in time. This ruined my position. King e6, King g2, I was just wasting my time because I knew that my whole situation here was dead. I was going to lose this game because of my hyper blunder on move 36. Instead of playing c6, I should play b6, which is guaranteed a queen. The following moves was played out. He began approaching this king up to my pawns. I was just moving my king back and forth. And as you can see, I moved it to e2 to prevent a draw situation, or a lost situation, actually, in this three move repetition. He played g2, I played king f2, he played f3. Same position. If I take this pawn, this pawn promotes. Still in the gridlock. However, these pawns are even closer to promoting along this file. Play king g1, blocking off any sort of movement in these pawns. King c7, king f2, king d6, king g1. I would like to point out there's no rush now for black. a5, I take en passant. He takes my pawn back. c7, king b7, c8, q. I was pretty much out of moves here. I was lost. I just begin desperately moving my king to different squares. He forced exchanges. There was nothing I could do about this h pawn. He began promoting his pawns, and in this position, he played the very big blunder of f2, which is stalemate. And this game was drawn. I'd like to point out that if he had played the move king f4, this wins. So thank you for watching this video, guys. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you learned from this experience. Because I have learned from it too. Uh, be sure to stay tuned to this channel for more videos on chess, and I hope you learned something from it. Thanks for watching.